Hey, just wanted to share something that's kind of been a burden on my heart for a little while now. Uh, we've been working on our Wednesday night Bible studies, going through the letters to the churches in Revelation, getting ready to jump into the rest of Revelation. And just really been between that and then uh, my associate pastor's been working through the book of James and just been hitting a lot of things that I think that the church in America, those who call themselves believers, in all too many cases, it has forgotten, um, is tuning out. Uh, lines in here, like uh, Revelation chapter 2, um, I have this against you, that you have left your first love. Therefore, remember from where you have fallen and repent and do the things you did at first. Uh, Revelation chapter 3, um, verse 1. He who has the seven spirits of God and the seven stars says this, I know your deeds and that you have a name, that you are alive, but you are dead. We're really struggling here in the United States. We've, as believers, as people who call ourselves believers, let me put it that way, we have gone off in all sorts of different directions and we have forgotten who we serve. We've forgotten our first love. We think that we're alive, but spiritually speaking, we're dead. We're fighting about all sorts of stuff that have nothing to do with what we really should be fighting about and for. Let me just give you some examples. As a pastor, I have people that are, what do you mean you don't make people wear masks? How dare you? What's wrong with you? Who are you serving? What do you mean that you ask people to wear masks? How dare you? What's wrong with you? Who are you serving? Because for them, the mask has become a, an idol. Forgive me. It, it has. Uh, and they've forgotten the point and the purpose and what's going on. We don't care necessarily about facts or truth. We pursue what we want to hear. So, for example, the news media we listen to, Fox, Newsmax, CNN, MSNBC, we don't choose it for whether it's accurate and telling us truth. We choose it because it tells us what we want to hear and believe, and the actual truth and facts doesn't matter. The whole situation with COVID, really what's happening to many people who call themselves Christians are irrelevant. I was reading about a pastor in Tennessee that basically has said, we don't care what the laws are. We don't care what the rules are. COVID is a myth. Yes, out loud said this. And if you wear a mask to our church, we're going to kick you out. And yet the slogan of the church is caring for others. Uh, what? Um, when you see people that want to pick a church based on how woke it is or how woke it's not. Do we believe in Black Lives Matter uh, or do we not? What political persuasion do you follow? Do you believe the election was a fake election or do you believe that it was legit? Do you really believe Biden won or do you believe Trump won? And people pick churches based on this. How do you believe the Constitution holds? Uh, just things that really don't matter. And, and I know some of you are going, but what? Uh, when I was in college, I was a history major. I had a core of political science. I spent a semester digging into the Constitution, and I actually still have my textbook. It's on one of my shelves here, where I dug into depth in the Constitution because at the time, I was very much into my political persuasion is the right one, and how dare you say something else. And, and so, I mean, I know the Constitution. I know... The history behind it, the stories, the compromises, why it reads what it does, what the intention of the fathers were. Something that a lot of people who are willing to argue about Constitution don't know because they've just heard it somewhere. Um, it, it's kind of the same kind of thing about a lot of people who say, oh yeah, but doesn't the Bible say? And they really don't know what it says because they've never looked at it. Um, please don't argue about something you've never actually read, let alone studied. Okay? <laughs> it, it just makes you look foolish. And unfortunately, that's where we're at, is we have a lot of people that don't care how foolish they look and sound. They don't care if they know what they're talking about. They will latch onto the smallest things that feed 
what they want to hear. And they've forgotten their first love. They've forgotten what they believe. They think they're alive and they're dead. As believers, we have certain jobs and tasks that we're supposed to do. One, we're supposed to let this speak to us. We're supposed to let God use his Holy Spirit and his word to speak to us, to change us, to convict us, to make us more like him. The more we do that, we will see the fruits of the Spirit from Galatians 5. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, gentleness, self-control. Those are the kinds of things that will manifest themselves in a believer. And if they are manifesting anger, hatred, selfishness, name-calling, uh, those kinds of things, you've got the wrong spirit working in your life. It's not a spirit of God. And why do we see so much of that coming from believers? It's because we're pursuing the wrong things. We've forgotten who we serve. We have a large group of people in churches who think that their job is to defend the Constitution, defend our rights from their idea of a corrupt government to stand up for freedoms of victory. Uh, I have news for you, and this is going to be a shocking to some of you. If you think that is your job as a believer and as a church, you have completely missed the point. You're in the wrong business. You're in the wrong ballpark. I love our freedoms and our Constitution, but that is not our job as believers. Paul says, I preach Christ and him crucified. Not I preach a better form of government that it stands for more people, that all people may be created equal. That's not in the scripture. Paul says, I preach Christ and him crucified. That's who we're supposed to be serving, not all these other things. Our job as believers, as a church, as a congregation, as a fellowship, as a gathering of people who follow Jesus, is to let him change our lives and let his light shine through us. Not the light of the United States, but the light of the gospel of God that convicts of sin, that loves the sinner, that pours out and changes us and saves us from our sin and brings grace and mercy. The power of the Holy Spirit to do things in your life that can't be done otherwise. Things that no political party or persuasion or president or country can do. We don't know what we're doing now. I see more pastors posting political stuff. How dare you talk about hurting people and Black Lives Matter and it's all a conspiracy. Well, you know what? If Jesus says to love the brokenhearted, I don't care what your stance necessarily is. If there's a hurting person there, our calling is to love them. And if you're more determined to decide their political bent first, you're more in pursuit of politics than in the passion of Christ, and you have idolatry in your life. If you are pursuing a political bent before people, you have idolatry in your life. And what's the first commandment? Thou shalt have no other gods before me. You shall not make any idols nor graven images, I love the U.S., but we've turned the flag into a graven image. We've turned the Constitution into a graven image. As good as the Constitution is, it is not Scripture. Sure, the Declaration says that in order to form a more perfect union, that all men may, equal, may have equal liberties. And forgive me, I'm messing it up. But that's the, that's the preamble to the Constitution. The Declaration of Independence, that all men are created equal and it have the rights to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. But then you follow that up, and we say, yes, yes, see? And then the Constitution actually makes all black men only three-fifths of a person. Oh, and women, they didn't have any existence at all, no rights at all. So wait, it doesn't matter, it doesn't match, something's wrong. And so if you're preaching one, then you're mistaking. This says all men and women, all creation, is created in the image of God and that he loves each one of us. I'll take this over the Constitution. 
any day. This is what we're supposed to be preaching. Preach him and his word. This is what we're supposed to be living. And if we're constantly pursuing politics, if we're pursuing our view on COVID, if we're pushing these other things, we're not preaching Christ. We're not living Christ. And in fact, I would actually say, if you're pushing those other things over people, I would say you really ought to start questioning your salvation. Who are you serving? Are you serving idols? Because if you're serving idols, you're not serving God and you're in danger of hellfire. And hell is a very real place. I carry my mask as I dig into it in my pocket. I have one all the time. I'm vaccinated, but I don't wear this for me. I wear this because I love other people. The whole point of COVID, by the way, COVID is not an American thing. It's not a Democratic thing. It's not a Republican thing. It's not a political thing. Stop that. It's killed millions worldwide, okay? Um, it's beyond us. Stop thinking self-centeredly. This might shock some of you again. The world does not revolve around us. It doesn't revolve around the United States. There's a little more to it than that. But if I'm in a crowded spot, I'll put my mask on. Do I necessarily really need to worry about getting it? No, but I don't want to be a carrier. I don't want to be somebody who makes others uncomfortable. I wear it because I love others. It's not about me. It's about loving God and loving people. And in too many ways, our country isn't doing either. Those people who call themselves by his name certainly don't live like it. And I could go on and on and on with the examples. But as soon as you start labeling names, if you have to throw out them liberals, if you have to throw out other names and labels, that's not a Christ-like thing. That's not what Jesus has called you to do or what he's called you to be. Pursue him in his holiness, his righteousness, his love, his forgiveness. I love the passion, the passion, the passage in Chronicles that we so often quote but we refuse to apply. It's referring specifically to a situation in the kingdoms when God wanted to heal the land. They were going through famine and dryness. It, it speaks to that. And God is waiting for the people to repent. But the principle of it applies to us as well. If my people who are called by my name, if you think you're a believer in God, that's you would humble themselves, get over your pride, your self-centeredness, your thinking you know better, that you're better than everybody else, that other people are worse than you and less valuable than you. If you would humble yourself and seek God's face, not our pol political persuasion, not our ideologies, not whether we think that the election was overthrown, stop that crap, because it is. But seek his face and his righteousness and turn from your wicked ways because all that other stuff is garbage. It's junk. All those things where you're lifting yourself up and saying, see how good I am and how evil you are because you have a different view and a different religion. Repent. As Jesus said in the letters, because if you don't turn back to your first love, I will remove your lampstand. He will remove you from the kingdom. He tells us in Matthew that he will prune the bush. As Paul puts it, the wild olive branches that have been grafted in will be trimmed out and thrown into the fire. Humble yourself. Seek God's faith and his righteousness, and turn from your wicked ways. Then he will bring healing. And until we're willing to do that, we're in big trouble. And it's not the fault of 
them liberals, them Democrats, them conservatives, them Republicans, them people who push COVID, those people who don't push COVID, the people who voted one way, the people who overthrew the, whatever garbage you want to throw out, because it's all junk. If you don't turn back to God, you're going to burn. And right now, our country is on the way because we can't get over ourselves. Repent. Repent. And turn back to what God has called you to be. Turn away from the other stuff and seek Him first. Because that's what's going to save our country. That's what's going to save you and our churches.